Will the defendants please rise? Nicholas Sapetti and Joseph Donnelly. You have been found guilty of federal racketeering charges. It is my duty to sentence you to a term of incarceration in a federal penitentiary for a term of not less than five years or more than 20 years. Bailiff. Papa, no! Family counselor. It's a dangerous city out there. Good morning, Eve. Do you remember your keys? Yeah? Kenny, your daughter keeps sticking her pretty nose into places that don't belong. She's gonna end up like her mother. Who is this? Who is this? Years to the day, and Nick Sapetti is back here amongst his friends. Mr. Sapetti, you served ten more years than Joey Danielli. Would you care to comment? Comment. Okay, Ex Miles Bye Kearney. Now. What are you trying to say? That Miles Kearney had a personal vendetta My against has you? No further comment. And what about you, Mr. Sapetti Jr.? What would you like to say? I got no comment either. Come on, brother. This is Jack Campbell, News Cam 8, Little Italy. Thank you. And today, down at the Trade Center... So this is what's been worrying you. He'd never touch me, Dad.
killed your mother. What makes you think he wouldn't kill you? Old gangsters don't frighten me. Former police commissioners with long memories and heart problems frighten me. Dr. Boris said you could run a little as long as you didn't overdo it. It's been a year since your heart attack, Dad. You just be careful. I always am. You taught me that. I got a cab for you. Sonny, when have you ever known me to take a cab to work? I walk, as an exercise, as in you should do more of uh, Well, I walked the post for 10 years. I don't walk nowhere I don't have to. Take the cab, huh? Now, if you walk uptown, your dad will spend the whole time worrying. Please, All for right. me. OK. For you. Ready? This interview is over. You're being most uncooperative, Gordon. And by the way, Ethel, if you print any of these lies, I'll not only sue you for slander. Gordon, I'll... I'm hardly Mike Wallace. Besides, I'm one of your best customers. See this suit? It's one of yours. Hmm, that's strange. You look so good on everyone else. Maybe because that blouse you're wearing with it is all wrong. Really, Gordon? Well, I've been told this is the right blouse. And I've also been told that most of your clothing line is manufactured by underage, illegal immigrants working in sweatshops. Care to comment? You tell Neve Kearney she's headed for a lawsuit. Both of you are. Now get out. Have a nice day, Gordon. fashion show. Will Ethel's dress be ready? It'll be ready. That woman is driving me crazy. <laughs> ah. So? Nice. Oh, do not let me forget to messenger this over to Jack Campbell at the TV station. Didn't you meet Jack Campbell a few years back? Did I? Six bagels for the Danish. You're nearly give me a stroke. Next time, make some noise. Yeah, sorry. Neve, she's back. I got news. Hi. Hi. I just left the house of Stuber. Gordon loved your blouse, but he took the fifth on the sweatshops, and then he threw me out. Look, Ethel, this whole thing is getting out of hand. If you want to stop it... If it wasn't for you, I'd just be doing another fluff piece. The exploitation of children is too important to walk away from. Kathy Lee didn't. Get me the address of one of Stuber's sweatshops, and we'll put him out of business. Tonight, maybe. Now, on to more important things. Will my dress be ready for the fashion show tomorrow night? Yes. Michaelina wants you here at 10 a.m. for your final fitting. No later, we are swamped. I'll be here. And you will seat me next to your father. Always pushing. Ethel, look, we're having a few friends over for dessert this evening. Would you like to come? Yes, on one condition. You come over and pick out something that'll make me look terrific. You're the fashion coordinator. If I'm not home, here's the key. <laughs> Bye.
Oh, the legend returns. I figured you'd be back to reclaim your old desk. What took you so long? How you doing? Too good a job for me to replace you. Besides, I'm ancient history. How you doing, Jerry? Hey, here at Quantico, we got two kinds of cops, the quick and the dead. What are you, mister? I'm busted, I'm disgusted. I can be trusted. Johnny, <laughs> garage. Hey, good to see you. You still in L.A. working for the DEA? Uh-huh. How about Lena and the girls? Nah, nah, I'm here in business. Business? What kind of business is it you can't come by the house or give me a call? When uh, you told me about the telephone threat to Neve, I called Agent DeBracho. Miles, maybe somebody's just trying to shake you up. Maybe so. When it comes to my daughter, I take these things very seriously. Especially when I receive the threat the very same day this animal gets out of prison. Miles, we're all concerned here. I mean, if it hadn't been for you going to the parole board once a year, Sepetti would have been out 10 years ago, just like Donnelly did. You not only cost this guy 10 years of his life, but he lost control of the family business to Donnelly. Mm. Oh, but if Sepetti wanted to kill me, he could have done it from prison. This guy slipped my wife's throat to get back at me. And he'll do the same thing to my daughter, and I am not letting that happen. Miles, I can't tell you what I'm doing here, but trust me on this. If Neve's name comes up in any way, you'll hear about it. I got eight. Thank you, Johnny. I owe you one. This would be great on you. Me. He's here. In person, live cam eight. Excuse me. <clears throat> ah. Miss Kinney. Jack Campbell. Uh -huh. I'm sorry to barge in like this, but I happen to be passing, and I remember that I had to pick up your schedule for the big fashion show tomorrow night. Right. Terrific shop you've got here. Thank you. Ah, is that service or what? Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, thank you for volunteering to do this for us. Ethel says you are a wonderful MC. Well, you don't refuse Ethel, do you? No. <laughs> and besides, cancer research is a great course. Well, I'll let you get back to work. <sighs> Miss Kearney, are we really going to pretend that we haven't met before? We shared an airplane ride for a few hours. Easy to forget. It was three years ago, and I didn't forget. You didn't call. And I have regretted that ever since. But you know how things happen. I switch channels, I move. You don't owe me any explanation. No, maybe not. Come to think of it, you didn't call either. I'll see you tomorrow night. Ethel, please. I'm strapped for cash. I can't afford to pay alimony anymore. You don't even need the money. Oh, but I do. You'll pay me this month, and you'll continue to pay me until the day you take your last breath. Now get out! No more money. Ruth and I have decided we're not paying it anymore. Oh, and how is that trashy little secretary you left me for? Seamus the Wimp, that was nothing. Did you have any luck in getting the address of Stuber's sweatshop? Mikey's still working on it. All right, my dear, you're the world-class fashion coordinator. Pick me out something that will knock your father's socks off. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh, just kills me that someone of Stuber's stature can design a blouse like this to go with a suit like that. I saw her, and I told her. Oh, great. We can finally live like humans. Let's celebrate. Yes, let's go to dinner. We can go to... Ruth, I mean, I, I don't have anything in writing. Maybe 
Maybe we should send her a check as usual this month, just in case. If she changes her mind, I will kill her myself. No, I'll get it. I'll get it. Please, let me get it. Please don't make me go back. Come on, come on. Hi, Hi. Uncle Sal. Sweetheart. <laughs> I'm going to come and see you tomorrow. Oh, a visit from you makes my day. This is uh, my wife's favorite cookbook. It's more like a family treasure. It's all in Italian, so you can't read it. Questi disegni sono stupendi. Where's Miles? Well, the last time I checked, that the Lamston was chasing him around the kitchen. <laughs> Lamston? The Snoopy writer. What's she doing here? Oh, I'll be right back. I can see where Neve gets her stunning looks. Your wife was an absolutely beautiful woman. Yeah, but what a temper. Very explosive. Just like mine. Just exactly how explosive are you? Anthony De La Salva, huh? Right. Now you behave yourself. Or I'm going to tell the world that you're really Sal Esposito <laughs> from 114th Street, you big fraud, you. <laughs> what are you going to tell the world about me, Uncle Doug? Uh, you know, just now in the doorway, I had a, a vision of you in a wedding gown. No. A big service. Place is packed. I'm presiding. My Latin is flawless. <laughs> well, don't stop there. Tell me, what does the groom look like? A lot like me, actually. <laughs> <laughs> These drawings are exquisite. Well, we're not allowed to doodle. No, oh, Mom was more than just a doodler. And what are you and your heart going to have for dessert? <laughs> Hello, Ethel. Ethel Lamsden is my oldest and dearest friend, Bishop Devin Stanton. Yes, who you appointed police chaplain when you were commissioner. Tell me, Your Grace, is it bishop these days, or is it now archbishop? But that information hasn't been made public yet. How did you know? Aha, then it is true. Neve. Let's all go into the living room. Ethel, the rag business is buzzing about some big expose you're writing. Who do I have to pay to be in it? Oh, rest assured, Sal, you will be in it. Those wonderful designs and those exquisite colors you call the Pacific Reef look has changed the way we all look at clothes. They say it was inspired by a visit to the Chicago Aquarium. Two great things happened in 78. The Yankees beat the Dodgers, and I visited the aquarium. It's an incredible place. Those tropical fish, those colors, awesome. I knew there was something in there, some kind of magic. You know what I mean. Yes, I think I do. I deserve oh. combat pay. She's been dogging me for two hours. She finds you attractive, Miles. You should be flattered, she appears very charming. That's Jimmy. enough. Uh, excuse me. Charming? Why don't we all have a seat? Hello? Mikey. Me. It's Michaelina. Hi, Mikey. Oh, great. You're my hero again. Thanks, Mikey. This is it. Good luck. What was all that about? What do you mean? Come on, I saw you pass a note to Ethel. It was nothing, Dad. It was just an address. Listen, Neve, I don't know what you two are up to, but I don't want you to get involved in anything that could be trouble. Ah! Ow! What happened? Oh! Ow! Ah! I burned my hand. Darn machine exploded or something. Ah, oh. I'm sorry about the book, Miles. Oh. I listen, I I know somebody who can get it cleaned. I Honey, know a guy who okay? can fix that. Oh, sweetie. Well, you can't even four wheels. Still working at that deli? Yeah. 
It's a condition on my parole, like associating with my old roommates is. So? So I thought you might be in need of a little excitement. It's more exciting than delivering pastrami sandwiches. Yeah. There's half in there. Get the rest when you're finished. Now, the first one, I don't care how you do. But the other one, make it look like an accident, okay? I'm good at that. That is gonna be great. That's great. Mikey, did that check I was waiting for come in? It's on your desk. Listen, Ethel is gonna be here any minute. Will you take care of her for me? I'd rather swim in the East River. Michaelina. Sergeant Collins, right? He used to drive for my father. Leaf cutie. <laughs> what a coincidence. Oh. Look, it's freezing. You'll catch your death out here. I'm only going around the corner to Michael Sachs. Why don't you go in the shop and grab yourself a cup of coffee? I'll be right back. Promise. Katie, I'd really appreciate it if you didn't tell your father you spotted us, okay? Spotted who? We owe you one. Either I get 7,000 yards of material, or I'll go elsewhere. There's my girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ooh, how's that hand? Huh, it's nothing. But these suppliers are driving me crazy. You take it easy. This fish of yours has already created a stir. Oh, who would have thought? Eve, how often do I have to tell you? Yesterday don't count. It's what you got today. Now. now. <laughs> Uncle Sal. My final payment. Thank you. I could never have opened up that shop without you. Mm. I told you to forget about the money. It was a gift, not a loan. And it gave me pleasure. Well, if it gave you pleasure to loan it to me, imagine the pleasure it gives me to pay you back. Capiche? You know, sometimes you sound so much like your mother. It gives me chills. <laughs> but you think like your father. So, how's your love life? I will see you tonight. <laughs> hey, Neve, you don't have to babysit your old man anymore. Get your own place again. Have some fun for crying out loud. Ciao.
Come on, Ethel, answer the phone. Something important must have come up. You know, Ethel, she wouldn't miss She's it. not here because she's inconsiderate. She might be late, not three hours late. I'm gonna drop it off. Here, I got you some vitamin C. Take at least six a day. Your cold will be gone before you know it. Thanks, Miss Curdy. I don't mean to sound rude or anything, but can you not be so thoughtful? I mean, just pretend that I'm not here, okay? Okay. looks beautiful. Why wouldn't it? I've got the best fashion coordinator in town. <laughs> How's the new book coming? It's all finished, and it's all about this fashion industry. Am I in it? By the book day. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Oh, She wouldn't miss sitting next to you for anything. Look, wherever she is, I hope she stays there. I'll be right back. I'll bet you don't even know who I am. I know who you are. You're Nick Sapetti's kid. You're wasting your Harvard education defending punks and wise guys. You like putting people in jail? I like keeping them out. Enjoy. Thanks. You know, I didn't have a chance to say, but you look just great. <sighs> Thank you. So do you. Jack, did you hear from Ethel at all today? No, not today. I saw her yesterday. She dropped some notes by the station. Why is something wrong? I'm not sure. She was supposed to be here. I'm getting a little concerned. Well, look, I've worked with Ethel before. She is at best a little flaky. I wouldn't worry. Excuse me, Jack. We're ready. That's my cue. Excuse me. Thank you. Still minding everyone's business, Ms. Carney? Running sweatshops is everybody's business. Mr. Stuber. Little advice, Kearney. Stay out of my business. Forgive my client. He's a little on edge today. Enjoy the show. Dad, that guy sitting next to Stuber. I know him from somewhere. Who is he? 
Nick Sapetti Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, your MC for the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Welcome to Fashion Celebrates Life, the designer preview benefit in aid of the Strang Institute for Breast Cancer Research. And if you look in your programs, you can read all about the fantastic work that the Institute is doing, thanks in no small measure to your generosity. Now, my right name there. is Jack Campbell. I'm your MC for the evening. An evening that promises color, brilliance, innovation, three brand new collections from three of your favorites. And please remember that... Come on, Ethel, show, pick up the phone. All those fashions that you will have seen modeled are for sale to the highest bidder. And to start us off, from the man who brought us the dazzling colors of the Pacific Reef look, I am delighted to present the brand new collection of Mr. Anthony de la Salva. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the stunning new collection from the House of Stuba. <laughs> Gentlemen, the talented and very beautiful Neve Kearney. Please let's hear it for our three designers and their beautiful models. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I said at the beginning of the evening, all the dresses that you've seen modeled tonight are open for a bid. And as all the proceeds are going to the Strang Institute for Cancer Research, I suggest you get out your credit cards and please don't be shy. We will also accept cash. I'll bid $1,000 for my daughter's design. $1,500. On one condition, that Miss Kinney and I have dinner tomorrow night. We have a deal. Perhaps Mr. Sapetti would now like to open the bidding on the next item. Great fall lineup for South. Congratulations. Thanks, honey. I think it'll be a good year for everybody. Dinner at Mendocati's on me. Sounds good. Me? Um, you go ahead. I'm going to help Sitsy with a few things. I'll catch up. You should. Yeah, you guys go. I'll see you there. Hello?
find what you're looking for. What are you doing here? You're Ethel's nephew Douglas, right? I'm Neve Kearney. I'm a friend of your aunt's. I haven't heard from her, and I was concerned that something... Uh-huh. Look, something is the matter. I know every piece of clothing in that So you apartment. break into her house at midnight and go through her stuff. Maybe I should call the cops and have you charged with breaking and entering. You don't break and enter with a key, Douglas. She was gone when I got here. Well, did she leave a note or anything? Look, the old lady splits whenever she feels like it. Just up and goes. But not without her coat. Every one of her winter coats is still here. No winter coat? Oh, now I'm really concerned. Well, if you hear from her, would you ask her to give me a call? Because I am concerned. I'd like to go now. Next time, try knocking. Good. Yeah, Nicky. You look good. Back, Nick. Good to see you. The boys. Sure Nicky, good to see you. Be Good. 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 Good to see you. Don't forget Charlie over here. Charlie. Good to see you. And there's somebody you never met before over here. Nick, there's Dominic Triano. That's a petty. I'm honored. Dominic came to us from Gus Polino in Los Angeles. It's been very good, earned very good for us. Gus Polino's a dear friend of mine. Wrote to me several times while I was away. Mm. Gus and Leela have a beautiful home in Balboa. Hmm, Gus and Leela are back together. I thought she left him home back to her mother's in Pocadillo. Come on, Dom. Fellas, please, have a seat. Oh, here, Deb. It's good to see you, fellas. It's good to be home. A lot of things have changed in the last 20 years. Some of them I like. Like those computers my grandchildren play with. And those phones that send pictures. I think you call them fax machines. And those other phones that don't have a cord. Uh... Nick, they call them cell phones. Thank you, Joey. But I don't like anything with the word cell in it. <laughs> so, as I was saying, there are some things I like. And there are some things I don't like. I built up a good thing here in the rag business. Nothing moved, unless I said it moved. Then what happened? Narcotics, the junk business. It's like quicksand. The deeper you get, it swallows you up. But I'm back now, and things are gonna change.
And I'm here to help you guys refocus on the things that made this family happy and prosperous. I want you guys to think about what I just said. And if anyone has any problems, come and see me. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have an appointment with my son. Before you go, Nick, uh, I have some information I want to share with you. Seems like somebody's looking to hurt Kearney's daughter. And the beauty of it, it's a freelancer. It's like a gift. A gift? <laughs> Somebody wants to hurt Kearney's daughter, you call it a gift. Yeah. Joey, would you really get stupid since I went away? What? What? Don't you realize I'm the first one they're going to come looking for? Nah. Joey, squash it. Now. I can't uh, squash something I didn't turn loose. Joey, find out who put out this contract and squash it. I'll wait for you, Nick. I can talk to the winner. And another thing. This guy, Dominic. I don't like him. Nicky, Dominic is solid. You love him that much? Yeah. Take his picture and use that fax machine of yours to send it to Gus Polino in L.A. And don't let this guy near a phone or out of your sight until Gus Polino clears it. Do you understand? No problem. Come on, Nick. No problem. Go have a nice meal. Don't worry about it. What happened to you? Sorry, I'm late. I got here as fast as I could. Did you find it? It's over there. Could you hold it? These people don't exactly welcome visitors. They can get pretty nasty if they know we're spying on them. Guardian Angels just showed up. This has got to be the sweatshop Ethel was looking for. Don't take your gun, get in. She may have been here. Go, go, go. Security. Hello, Father. Hello, Bishop. Who would have thought we'd live to see the day when they'd have to lock the door of a church in broad daylight? It's not just St. Mary's, Dad. Look around. The whole neighborhood is disintegrating. This thing with Sepetti getting out of prison, it's causing you grief, isn't it? Yeah, it's really getting to me. Well, let it go. The guy would be crazy to try anything now. I've been dealing with these guys for 30 years. Nothing that these crazies could do would ever surprise me. God works in strange ways, huh, Bishop? There's seven million people in this city, and I gotta run into him. Come on, Buster. But you know something, Kearney? I know the rules. You can't do the time, don't do the crime. But you, you cost me 10 years of my life. 10 years of watching my kid grow up. Easy, man. It's okay. I ain't ever gonna forget Central Park. 
You come within a hundred yards of my daughter and I'll kill you. Swear to God, I'll kill you myself. I didn't kill your wife, Kearney. And if anything happens to your daughter, I had nothing to do with it. Nothing. why you think we'd know where she is. Well, I saw your husband at her house the other day, and I thought maybe she... Hello, Seamus. What do you want here? I haven't seen or heard from Ethel in the last two days, and I'm starting to get worried. When you talked to her the other day, did she say anything about going on a trip? Some of her clothes are gone. She's always taking off someplace. The trouble is she comes back. Seamus, don't talk like that. So you haven't seen or heard from Ethel since I saw you at her house the day before yesterday? That's right. I haven't seen her since. Take good care of your family, Counselor. It's a dangerous city out there. You're late. Well, hello to you, too. Mom's lamb? Smells great. Ethel didn't call, did she? No, no calls. Nee, you are letting this thing get you Dad, all... Dad, she left without a winter coat, and it's freezing out there. What does that have to do with you checking out a warehouse on the Lower East Side, huh? And I want you to stay away from Seamus Lamston's house. Oh, well, I see you got your daily briefing on my schedule from Sergeant Collins. Aren't I a little old to be escorted around the city by bodyguards? Good. Well, act your age, and I will call them off. What goes better with lamb? Red or white? Beer. Oh, Dad. I'm gonna be okay. Nikki, I have no idea how much I missed this stuff. Do anything else, Mr. Sylvetti? Yeah, Vincent, I'll have an espresso, okay? Nick, you winding? I'm okay. Thank you, Vincent. It's great to have you back, Pop. Dominic, right? Dominic Troiano from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Grab a chair, have a seat. Thank you. So tell me, <clears throat> what's on your mind? My mind? And Joe just dropped me off. He said you wanted to see me. I wanted to see you. What he said? Joey said that? Yeah. Joey said I wanted to see you? That's a petty. The guy dropped me off. He said you wanted to see me. I don't know. I don't understand. I don't know. Dad. Dad, Ethel wouldn't have missed sitting next to you at the preview for anything. Mm hmm And she would never have walked away from the story she was working on. It, it was too important to her. Mm hmm All right, I'll tell you what. If she doesn't show up by tomorrow, I will call the commissioner. Thank you. Uh-uh-uh. Hold on, I'll get it. You work for a living. Tonight, 
Tonight, a change of leadership in the Sepeti crime family seems to have occurred. Just a few moments ago, an unidentified gunman walked into this Little Italy restaurant and opened fire on recently paroled crime boss Nick Sepeti. Two Sepeti bodyguards were killed instantly, while Sepeti himself was gravely wounded, along with one other man who has been tentatively identified as an undercover federal agent. But both men have just been rushed to Bellevue, and I understand that both men are in critical condition. This is Jack Campbell, News Cam 8, Little Italy. No, no, Pop, come on, save your strength, Pop. Let me talk. Let me talk. For 20 years, I couldn't wait to go to sleep at night so that I could dream about you and me. Play baseball. They're on their way. I told them you're gonna make it, so don't make a liar out of me, all right? Johnny, it's important. Is Neve in trouble? Uh, Neve, it's a bet. No contract. No freelance. Make it quick, Chaplin. I'm gonna walk home. Are you sure? You didn't pull the trigger, but what you did was worse. You killed him every day for 20 years. My father did what any man whose wife was murdered would do. Don't argue with him. Give me a minute, Dad. I am really sorry about your father. I know how it feels to lose someone you love to violence. I thought it was safe for me to walk the streets again. In New York? Are you nuts? <laughs> Just kidding. Listen, you tell your father we did a good job, okay? Of course. And thanks. I owe you one. Hey. You gonna miss me? I bet you're gonna miss me. Must be your day for flowers. I just wanted to thank you. Uh, well, thank you. But thanks for what? Nobody seems to care about an old gangster dying. But you did, and I appreciate that. Place. Need? It's your dad. I'll let you get back to work. Dad? And not only didn't she tell you she was leaving, she also didn't take the proper clothes. Am I following so far? Look, Commissioner, Ethel left without a winter coat. It's freezing out there. Neve, I sent a detective to talk to Mrs. Lamson's nephew, Douglas. Now, he's not concerned at all. Says she takes off like this all the time. Yeah, well, let's not forget what they were working on. The sweatshops and Gordon Stuber. Right. Stuber and the sweatshops are off limits for the purposes of this discussion. Let it go, Neve. Jerry must have his reason. Yeah. Where? Yeah. Thanks. 
Neve, can you describe Ethel Lampson, please? Um, she's in her 50s. 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, about 135 pounds. Blonde hair, hazel eyes. Why? Body of a Jane Doe matching that was found this AM up in Rockland County. She'd also been beaten. And judging from the absence of blood at the gravesite, we're pretty sure she was killed elsewhere and transported here. So somebody went to a lot of bother to make sure the body wasn't found. I know. No ID. Even the label of her clothes was cut out. A local woman found the body. It was a million and one shot. Could I have the name of the woman who found the body? Sure. Kitty Conway. Please, come in. You have a lovely house here, Mrs. Conway. Thank you. Please, call me Kitty. Have a seat. Michael and I put a lot of ourselves into it. It's a shame he didn't live to enjoy it. Yes, I know what you mean. How did your husband... Heart attack. Can you tell us how you uh, found Ethel? I'll tell you, it's something I never want to go through again. Like looking at a mannequin's hand. It's so white and nails so red. What was she wearing? A blue suit um, and I think a blue and white striped blouse. No coat, poor thing. Wait. Wait a minute. A blue suit and a blue and white striped blouse? Yes. No, no, I chose a white blouse to go with that blue suit. Capiche? I have no idea what she's talking about to you. Uh, I think what your daughter is saying is that Ethel Lamston wouldn't have been caught dead wearing that blue and white blouse. Bye. Nice lady. Yeah, very nice. Very pretty, too. Oh, Dad, you forgot your hat. I'll go get it. No, 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 no. That's her. What you're witnessing right now is a combined operation between the NYPD, the Labor Commission, and Immigration. The building that we will be entering will look at first sight like any other building in the district. Only once we get inside, you will see how different it really is. Because inside, we will be confronted by one of life's grimy ironies. Here we go. And that irony is that behind this door, some of the city's poorest are making starvation wages, making party clothes for the world's richest. Okay, Paul, cut it, cut it, cut it. Okay, pack it up. See you back in the van. But they were here. I saw them taking the girls in and out. Yeah, well, maybe they saw you too. Hey, come on. Don't worry, it could have been a lot worse. We could have been going live. Where do we go next? Shut them all down today, as in now. Who cares what they like? And listen, that shipment of blouses I have on back order, cancel it then. What? It has to be canceled! You listen to me! Me, what? You've got more guts than brains, lady. Get out of here before Before I... what? Before you bury me in some park in Rockland County? Mr. Stupa, before Ethel Lamson was killed, she was working on a story that makes some pretty serious charges against you. What was that? Does he have your next sweatshop set up for you? I told you to leave. Is it not true, Mr. Stupa, that you operate along with certain other interests, chain of sweatshops that employ underage illegal workers? Me? Close the shop. Cut it, Paul. I want the girl taken out. I'll take care of it, Charlie. Yeah, when? Now, look, it's important. No, no, important, don't do it. It's imperative that the broad be taken out. You understand? Now, forget about making it look like an accident. Just do it. This is very simple, Rumi. Take her out, 
or you get taken out. Use this, it's been cleaned. There's no place to run, Rumi. So do a good job. Hey, Charlie. Is it okay if I use my own? But we're all out of chocolate cheesecake. Oh, no. I have planned my entire day and my entire night around having a piece of chocolate cheesecake. This isn't fair. It's just isn't fair. Would you like something else? <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you. All right, Miss Kenny. I want to know your hopes, your dreams, and your fears in that order. Hopes, dreams, and fears, mm -hmm. all on the first date. I'm sorry, but I am just not that kind of girl, Jack. <laughs> right. Then tonight, I'll just settle for the hopes. Tomorrow night, I get the dreams. Let me see. Um, I hope that my father stays healthy and lives to a ripe old age. I hope you have happiness in your life and career. I hope for a world where children... children don't have to work in horrible places. You all right? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm fine. Uh, this is great, Jack. I really needed something like this. I'm just a little distracted, that's all. Right. Then I know just the thing. Shall we? We meet again. What a coincidence. My sister and I needed to get my mother out of the house for a couple of hours. It's pretty bleak over there. It's very thoughtful of you. Well, I'm a thoughtful guy. Like right now, I'm going to advise you to stop implicating my client, Gordon Stuber, in any illegal activities before I file a restraining order and sue you for libel, slander, defamation of character, as well as... <laughs> Gordon Stuber doesn't have any character to defame. And the fact that you would claim him as a client speaks volumes to me about you, Mr. Savetti. Now, was there anything else on your mind? Just that I think you are the most beautiful woman I have ever seen in my life.
Well, here we are. Safe and sound. This has been a lot of fun, Jack. Thank you. <laughs> what me? <need> <laughs> It's been quite a lot more than just fun for me. I haven't been kissed like that since the eighth grade. <laughs> Is that good or bad? You tell me. tomorrow. Great. That's okay. That's okay. It's cold. I'll be fine. <laughs> Good night. Good night. All right, Joey, what's the mystery? I thought you might enjoy this. ¿Cuántas cajas trajiste? Sí, cuántas. ¿Está ahí? Yo sí. Bueno. What's the holdup? Why do I have to be here? Our friend wants your signature as proof. Final delivery. He also said to tell you that. As of now, this room is officially closed. Let's get it loaded now! Move! You, come on! Let's do it. Well, we've been on to Stuber and his pals for a while. We just didn't know how they were getting the junk into the country. So when Neve and Ethel start investigating that sweatshop thing, Stuber gets nervous and makes some mistakes on the telephone. Yeah, serious mistakes. If it hadn't been for Neve and Ethel, maybe we never would have made this case. That's why Stuber killed Ethel. Nah, no way Stuber killed her. We've had him under 24-hour surveillance for the last 10 days. Uh, guys like Stuber hire people to do things like that. Maybe, but it sure looks like the ex-husband. He had a ton of motive. 
Anyway, we'll know real soon. You arrested Seamus? Just about to. We got a witness that places him outside Ethel's house the night she disappeared. Now, looks like he did it. Now all we gotta do is prove it. Come on, let's get out of here. If you were to go out and buy this designer blouse tomorrow morning, it would cost you $75. If, however, you bought it right now, it would cost close to 10,000. Why? Because of these ordinary looking shoulder pads. What you're looking at is high grade heroin, lots of it. About $100 million worth that was seized early this morning in a raid that officials say was the biggest of its kind since the French Connection case in 1961. Hey, you just missed your live cam man. Was he good? In another high-profile fashion industry case, the ex-husband of murder journalist Ethel Lamsden was taken into custody early this morning at his Long Island home. I don't know, Dad, but Seamus Lamsden just doesn't seem like the type who would murder someone. Right, they never seem like the right type. But he's got the best motive, money. This just doesn't feel right. All right, well, I'm off. I'll see you tonight. All right. Wait a minute here. Sweat on the brow. Treadmill at 7 a.m. This sudden interest in your physique wouldn't happen to have anything to do with an upstate widow now, would it? You don't have to worry about the upstate widow. She didn't take the bait. Go on, get to work. <laughs> Ethel's notes? Yeah. Gone over them a hundred times. Keep thinking there's something I'm missing. Like this. She questions the date the Chicago Aquarium opened. Why? Yes, can I have the telephone number for the Chicago Aquarium, please? Oh, Kitty, what a pleasant surprise. I hope I'm not interrupting. Oh, no, absolutely not. So, uh, what brings you to the big city? You lost something. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I was wondering where I left that. Uh, um, you didn't come all the way here just to return this to me, did you? Oh, no, I... What if I did? I would be very flattered. I would be very relieved. I was starting to think you'd never find this. <laughs> I even left a card and... <laughs> How about a cup of tea? I'd love some. Has there been any news about Ethel's death? No, nothing. The police are still investigating it. Thank you. What happened? Oh, my late wife, Renata, this was her favorite cookbook. And a friend of mine, Sal, spilled espresso all over it. I'll bet you can get it restored. There's a place in the village that specializes in restoring old books. Already done. I bring it in tomorrow. Can I? Oh, please. Thank you. Oh, how charming. I can see why you want this restored. These sketches are terrific. Ah, the Pacific Reef colors. That is so strange. Chicago Aquarium didn't open until 1979. 
Hi, Stephanie. This is Neve. Can I talk to Uncle Sal, please? Sure. Your friend must be Anthony De La Salva, the famous designer. So this is where it all got started. Neve must have been the first person ever to wear the Pacific Reef look. So your wife is a designer? No. Still there. Oh, hi, Miles. No. Neve left about five minutes ago. She was meeting Sal at his place. All right, thank you. Yeah, Jerry, this is Miles. I want you to send the team over to... here for the police. Personal. Just a job. You were hired to kill me? Don't I at least have the right to know who? Who? I'll tell you who. Crazed, lovesick punk who followed you here and shot you to death. Then he turned on me, and I had to kill him. Uncle Sal, I called the Chicago Aquarium. 
It wasn't open in 78. Don't worry, Neve. After you're dead, I'll comfort Miles. I'm very good at that. You killed Ethel. She saw Mom's sketches in the cookbook. You were always smarter than Miles. My mother designed the entire Pacific Reef collection. Every piece. She had a genius for fashion that you have to be born with. And she wasted it all on a cop who doesn't know the difference between a house coat and a coronation robe. And for that, you killed her. Stop. Stop, Miles. What are you going to shoot me, Sal? Face to face, man to man? No, it's not your style. Never has been. Kill innocent women. It's your speed. Renata, Ethel. We shoot punks in the back. I didn't want to kill Renata. You're not fit to mention her name. Now put the gun on the floor. Or use it on yourself. Because if I take it away, I'm going to kill you with it. I'll shoot. Ah! He's got another gun in his pocket, Dad. Ah! 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 Get him out of here. Get him. Well, let's go. Please, Uncle Sal. Tell me why. Get him out of here. Right. Come on. Just got off the phone from Bellevue. Johnny's gonna be okay. Look, I know it doesn't mean too much right now, but I'm sorry. I wasted 20 years of my life hating your father. So don't waste your life hating me. It's not worth it. I want to hear you say it. I said it. I am sorry. No, sorry doesn't do it. I don't want your sorry. I want you to say it loud enough so that your daughter can hear. I want her to hear you say, my father, my father didn't kill her mother. He didn't do it, and I was wrong. You were wrong. You did what you had to do, Miles. I didn't.
I'm gonna go to Bellevue and check on Johnny. I'll take you, Dad. I'll drive you. I've never been to Bellevue. Okay. Johnny's gonna be okay, Dad. Everything's gonna be okay. I know a place near here that does great chocolate cheesecake. Chocolate cheesecake is exactly what I need right now.